Oh, I'm so glad you're here because I was just about to begin this month's episode of the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show is comprised of videos made by our very own digital field and editing class. And today we just have a bounty of interesting videos for you to view. For instance, we'll learn how to properly care for and clip your dog's nails. We'll learn what pack goats are really used for. And we'll get to learn about the Roof Community Services in rural Thurston County. So sit back, stay tuned, and get ready to enjoy some great videos here today on the TCTV Training Show. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. They're learning how to shoot and learning how to light. Learning how to mic and edit right. These are TCTV's finest in training. Doing their best with focusing and framing. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. You're watching TCTV. It's the Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. They will get better. Hi, and welcome to the TCTV Training Show. My name is Maggie Flickinger, and I'm a member services facilitator here at TCTV, and at least for this month, the host of the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show is comprised of videos made by members of our very own digital field and editing class. You can watch new episodes of the TCTV Training Show every month, and we're always on Thursdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 3.30 p.m. only on TCTV Channel 22. And with that, let's get to our first video made by Kayla Swearingen and Jeremy Black. Hi, I'm Jeremy, this is Kayla, and this is our demonstration dog, Venus. We're here to show you how to properly clip a dog's nails. There are a few items you need before cutting your dog's nails. First, there are standard household scissors for trimming away the hair from your dog's nails. Small nail cutters for your large, smaller breeds of dogs. Large nail cutters for your large breed dogs. Quick stop in the event that you cut the quick of your dog's nails and a low power dremel or a nail file for black, for black nails or for trimming up sharp edges on your dog's nails. With your dog sitting beside you or standing, place one of his or her paws in your hand and gently pull it for forward. Firmly hold the dog's paw and push to extend the nails. Next, you'll use your scissors to trim away the hair from the dog's nails. Once it's trimmed away, you can, begin, you can begin trimming your dog's toenails. In white nails, you can see the pink area inside the nail, which is called the quick. The quick contains blood vessels and nerves. In dogs with black toenails, you can look under the nail and you might be able to see the quick. If you cut into the quick, don't panic. This is when the quick stop needs to be used. Put a little bit of it onto your finger or onto the tip of a cotton swab 
and hold for several seconds, and the bleeding will begin to stop. Once done clipping the nails, it's time to touch them up. This is when the nail filer comes in handy. Use the nail filer to remove any rough edges. Remember, if your dog has a dew claw, to trim them up too. Now that we have showed you how to properly trim your dog's nails, we would like to thank the Thurston County Forest Extension Office for letting us use their facilities. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Jeremy and Kayla. You did a great job of educating the public about something that a lot of us don't know anything about. And I give you special kudos for handling what seemed to be a very squirmy dog. That aside, I enjoyed the gradient that you had at the beginning of your piece. Both the bright colors and the demanding font really made the image pop, and it engaged your viewers in what was about to be seen. Also, I liked all of your slow zooms. While they were a little bit rough, they helped the viewer see the proper procedure in clipping their dog's nails, and I'm sure with a little bit of practice, you'll get those slow zooms to be as smooth as they can be. Unfortunately, you did have some problems with your transitions. I noticed that sometimes you made your fades a little bit too fast, and it made it look like you had a lot of jump cuts. One way to fix that is to make your fades a little bit longer, or to do a simple cross dissolve without any black. Also, some of your transitions cut off the audio, so you should always make sure to have a little bit of dead air beforehand in order to make a smooth audio transition. I also noticed that there are a lot of jump, real jump cuts at the beginning of your clips, so in the future, you should always roll for at least five seconds before you begin shooting. And finally, you should always try to memorize your script beforehand because it looks a little bit unprofessional to always be looking down at the floor. And Otherwise, great job, and let's move on to our next video by Serena Jensen. Hi, I'm Grant Johnson. I'm Brianna Jensen. And we're in the Capital Caprines 4-H Club with goats, and we're just here to tell you a little bit about some pack goats. This is my goat Felix, and He's a Nigerian dwarf goat. He can carry somewhere around 15 to 20 pounds because he's, he's around 60 pounds and they can carry 15 to 20 percent of their body, no, 20 to 30 percent of their body weight. Well, that was our obstacle course. So if you like to go backpacking and like to go camping, but you don't want to take all that weight on you, why don't you try out some pack goats? They follow you nice and they can carry a lot of the weight for you. And if you also want to get involved in 4-H, they're great 4-H projects and you can get a hold of the extension office. Wow, <laughs> whoever thought there was so much to know about pack goats. Serena, I think you did an excellent job of choosing a subject that, while a little bit offbeat, would definitely engage your viewers. I think it's safe to say that I learned more about goats in your three minute video than I've learned in my whole life. Well, that aside, I really enjoyed the music that you had throughout your entire piece. For instance, the bluegrass tune that accompanied your obstacle course scene really uplifted the tone of your whole piece, and it made that sequence seem extra fun. Otherwise, I did notice that you had some problems with your transitions. For instance, at the very end of your piece, the music that you used completely cut off what your subject was saying, 
and that was because you didn't have a smooth transition. So in the future, you should really fine tune your editing and make sure that you don't use your transition until your, your subject is done speaking. Other than that, I think you did a great job and I look forward to learning more about goats in the future. And with that, let's move on to our next video by Ricardo Barrientes. My name is Kelly McNally and I'm the program director at Roof Community Services located in the rural community of Thurston County, South Thurston County. Roof Community Services offers uh, five basic components to our program. We have a food bank, an after school program for youth, a uh, family services program which consists of parenting classes, emergency services which consists of mostly uh, rental assistance and energy assistance, um, community projects, mostly um, consisting of food drives, uh, gifts for children at Christmas time called Operation Santa, and back to school supplies. Um, Roof Community Services has been established, or was established in 1993 as a program of Together, which is a community mobilization uh, agency out of Thurston County. Um, after about 10 years, we decided we wanted to branch out and be our own agency. And we have um, been our own agency for about three years now. Uh, Roof Community Services is also, is also located in the Rochester Community Center, which is the old Rochester Primary School, still owned by the Rochester School District. And within this building, there is the Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers Big Sisters, Weed and Seed Strategy, the Sheriff's Department, a uh, volunteer-run library. WIC and the Thurston County Health Department also use the facility. Um, and then we're just open for any other meetings. We're kind of here as a service to the folks of Rochester and to uh, people in South Thurston County um, so that they don't have to drive all the way to Olympia for some services. Uh, throughout the year we bring in many different uh, speakers and agencies, different organizations to uh, serve this part of, of the county. and. Um, we just like to help in any way we can. My name is April Overly. I am the unit director for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Thurston County, Rochester Branch. Roof Community Services addresses the needs of the community by providing a safe place for children, youth, and families, and providing services to improve their lives. If you would like more information about Roof Community Services, please check out our website at www.roofcommunityservices.org. And if you have any questions, you can call me at area code 360-273-6375. Ricardo, I think it's great that you chose to highlight an organization that's been benefiting our local community. And with that, I really enjoyed your opening sequence. Both the music and your clips were at the perfect length to really grab in your viewers. And that's the most important thing to have at the beginning of your show. I also really enjoyed the B-roll that you had throughout your entire piece. It's really important to be able to visually tie into what your subject is saying. Otherwise, your viewer might get lost. And also, it makes your interviews a lot more interesting. Unfortunately, I did have some problems with how you presented your subject. Your subjects were often portrayed against a blank white wall, and frankly, that can look a little bit static. In the future, you might want to place them outdoors or in a, or in a room that has a lot more going on in the background so that your eye can always be engaged in what's going on on screen. Also, the audio on your subject was a little bit low. It's pretty easy to change that in editing, and all you'll need to do is just bump up the audio levels a little bit, and then your subject will sound just fine. And lastly, you had an interview in the middle of your show that was a little bit out of place. In the future, you might want to cut out that interview altogether, 
or you might just want to make a longer piece. Otherwise, I thought you did a great job of presenting the local organization to your viewers, and I hope that you'll be doing more work here at TCTV. Training Show! Hi, I'm Peter, and this is the training tip of the day. Today I'm going to show you guys how to first set up the camera and some of the equipment. So now, I'm going to show you some do's and don'ts of how to set up and how not to set up the equipment. Here we go. The do's and don'ts of setting up a camera. Now that we have the camera fixed to the tripod, we need to make sure that we have enough power to turn the camera and all the accessories on. This is the power adapter for the camera. The adapter slips on just like so. And if you're using a battery, it slips on the same way, but be aware that the battery might not always be charged. If that's the case, you can use the included charger, like so. Plug it into the wall and you're good to go. Now that our camera has power, we want to make sure that our scene is correctly lit. So using this total light, I'm going to use an umbrella to reflect the light back onto our subject. Over here we have the Omni light, which is generally used as the key light or the backlight. And on this side is the Toda, which when reflected can be used as a fill light. Now these lights are both way too bright, so don't use this as a reference. Just know that this is what their function is. So now that we have our lighting and our camera set up, we need sound. In front of me is the shotgun mic, which can isolate a voice in a very noisy room or pick up something from far away. Testing one, two, three. This is probably not. This is closer than the mic should actually be. You're going to distort the sound. And oh my god, it's clipping. It's clipping! We also have the lavalier mic, which clips onto your shirt like so. And it's useful for picking up just one voice. Also, if the person wants to move around and you don't really want to show a mic just pointing around in the shot. 
Mr. President, we have a threat to national security. Please move to level two, basement sub B section eight. Now that we have our camera correctly set up, our lights ready, and our sound great, we have to frame our shot. So using these controls on the tripod, the arms and the knobs, we can pan and tilt, and also we can adjust zoom on the camera itself. What? What? I can't hear you. Give directions, director. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. The camera's too high. What do I do? What do I do? It's not very effective, handheld. <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever. How does that song go? Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Hopefully this training tip of the day helped you understand some of the do's and don'ts of operating the camera and its equipment. Have a nice day! Well, that's it for the TCTV training show. And, of course, the uh, fun little TCTV training tip of the day. So listen, if you want to become a part of TCTV, if you want to become an independent producer, or you would like to be involved in uh, community activity or community action or nonprofit activities, and you would like to show these events or be a part of the events that are shown on this channel, you can join us. You would uh, uh, take the classes and become a member and check out equipment and uh, join the show. Okay, well thank you and we'll see you again next month. Bye-bye. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. They're learning how to shoot and learning how to light. Learning how to mic and edit right. These are TCTV's finest in training. Doing their best with focusing and framing. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. You're watching TCTV. It's the Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. They will get better.